Now, one thing more. Will you permit it to be said? Day before yesterday morning, you'll notice on the, vi- uh, the board out there a vision. I had a vision. It's about five o'clock, as my wife back there knows, or six. I'd woke up. We got up to get the children ready to go to school. I just had these now and then. And you all know, every one of you here, that they never fail. Amen. <laughs> they, they are absolutely perfect. See? They never fail. And I thought that I was the happiest person I ever seen. I was standing in the sun, S-U-N, and was, um, and was preaching the gospel to a large mammoth congregation. I just want to see if there's been tape. Um, a large mammoth congregation. And they were sitting in a forest. And streaks of the sun were shining down on them. Just here and there. Uh, getting it. Getting the word. And I'm, as usual, always too long, too late. Preach too long. And I preach so long until the congregation become hungry for physical food. And they, some of them got tired. So they just got up, went out to get them some food, started going out. I said, don't, don't. I had two climaxes I wanted to meet, I wanted to meet in my sermon. And the Lord had given it to me. And any preacher knows when you really know it's, it, God's given it to you, you're just burning to tell the people. And I was just a preaching Charlie just as hard as I could preach. Just laying there on your own and saying, all these great things, this is what God's doing. Look at this. He discerns the thoughts of the heart. What is it? The Word. And going like that. Oh, I wish I could remember what I was saying, what my text was. I can't think of it. See? But I was just preaching away and I was watching myself do it. And then when I stand there looking and watching myself preach it, and I was just preaching to who wouldn't have it. And after a bit, I raised up, you know, and I thought, glory to God. I said, look at these wonderful things. And this, that. And directly, I noticed the people getting get like it was physically hungry. And so they had enough spiritual... So they started walking away. And some of them started walking away. I thought, what's the matter with everybody? And, and I looked, and here's some young couples going along to my side. And I thought, I said, just a minute, friend, just a minute. You'll be back again when the evening shadows fall. <laughs> I said, you'll be back again. But let me give you this first climax. Where does all these things come from that I've showed you? Where are they from? I said, here they are. They're in the Word of God. They are, thus saith the Lord, His promise. Because I said, all of you bear me record. Witness this, that my commission is stay with the Word. I said, what's the matter with all of you? Can't you understand the Word? You must understand it. And someone said, man, I'd like to have some biscuits and so on. Like well, I just thought, well, glory to God. If they want biscuits, let them go get them. So I didn't. I turned around and I thought, oh, but you know what? The shadows is going to fall after a while. Right away. And I said, then tonight, when that congregation gathers in again, now I put the climax to them and told them that the things that they have seen me do is found in the Word of God. Not in some mythical book or some organization. It's found in the Word. See, every bit of it in the Word calls them commission to that. I thought, you know, they'll everyone be back tonight. So here's what I'll do. I'll background. Kind of background. You know the way I do it on these church ages and things. Say what I said before. I background it on the Word and then this great marvelous climax. I said, what a time it'll be. Praise be to God. And I've seen myself getting real little here. That praise be to God. i see myself fading up like that. And here I was standing there. Now, here's the interpretation there. I mean, the first thing that I have done, the things that's been done has been mythical to the people, most of them. I don't mean the full gospel and saints of God, but I mean most of the people. And you never want to look at the world cosmos as a message of God. When you go and you say, like Bose said, I've always said, I had a dream years ago that the, the God would send me to Chicago and shake Chicago for the glory of God. I said, Joseph, he's already done it. Why well, said they had not shaken since Moody? I said, that, I'm talking about the church. That's cannon fodder out there. That's just dust of the earth. That bunch cramming through the streets, painted Jesse Bells and everything. I said, that's out there. And them big old lodges and things will crumb and fall into the streets. And I said, he's talking about the church. The church has seen the revelation of Jesus Christ made manifest. Amen. And they recognize it. They may not be 15 out of Chicago. They may not be 10 in this generation. Now the whole city of Chicago will come forth. Did you ever think of that? As it was in the days of Noah. 
soul will it be at the coming of the Son of Man, wherein eight souls were saved? <laughs> How many come out of Sodom? <laughs> see what I mean? I doubt being a handful. See? But the church itself has received the shake and they've recognized it. They know the word. They've seen the word when it was being materialized. And they caught it. Now, look at that for a minute. Now, and this first message, when they'd see it, everybody rallied for it. So, oh, glory to God. Oh, if I could see this, that, and they go right away the same way they come in, see? And now, they think, well, I don't know. Where would you join? If I don't come with this, it'll be this way, and I'll be kicked out over here, and I won't have nothing to do here. And brother sit down and say, well, what would I do if I... See there? They won't stop long enough to recognize it's the Word that God promised being manifested. See? And they walked away. But don't worry. The shadows are close at hand. See? When I return to the field, you remember the other night of the message that he gave me back when I was laying the cornerstone, just exactly said, do the work. said, when you come out of this vision, read 2 Timothy 4. You know what's laying right there on the cornerstone 33 years ago? said, do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of your ministry, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall heap teachers having itch and ears turn from the fable, from truth unto fables. If that hasn't been just word by word. But remember then the other night when I never did read the rest of it. The thirty something years that I preached in this tabernacle, never one time did I ever go any farther than that, and I don't know why. I often wondered till one day I seen where Jesus picked up the scroll and began to read and read half of the prophecy and stopped and said, there in Capernaum, he said, and this day this prophecy is fulfilled. Why didn't you read the rest of it? It pertains to his second coming. Amen. See? And there I'd read that not in the morning. I picked up that, and there it was right before me at Southern Pines, South Carolina, that morning. standing out there talking to Joseph Bolze, leaned up against the side of a car. I struck it. Paul said, I, all man has turned against me. There's no man with me. Demas has forsaken me, loving this present world. And I'm now re- looking the coppersmith dummy must run. Look what Demas must have thought. Why well, I seen Paul preach the gospel and heal the sick, and here he sits suffering himself, carrying a doctor along with him. Luke, all the time he goes, <laughs> taking a doctor with him. A man preaching about. Why well, I seen him smite a man blind? Said the Lord, rebuke thee, and you'll be blind for a season, and let the coppersmith run him out of a meeting. I guess he lost his power to smite man blind. Unless he lost his power to bind healing. God's turned against him. I don't think Demas went out into the world because Demas is of a, you know, his history. He was of a big, rich family. And he wanted to go with the rest of the crowd. But Paul, poor little Paul. What was it? God always lets a ministry get like that and then crowns it. He let Jesus get to a place, look there, when he could raise the dead. When he could do anything he wanted to. And let a Roman soldier jerk beard out of his face and spit in his face. Hit him on it. Put a rag around his face and said, Now, you, you know, they tell me you are a prophet. All of us stood around the reason. Hit him on the head and said, Now tell us which one hits you. He knows which one hit him. Amen. 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 Sure he did. Sure. See? But his ministry is fixing to be crowned. Amen. It always gets that spot where it seems like it's real, real weak, just about gone. Then God crowns it. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Let it happen. Amen. Let it happen, Lord. 